Hi, this video will show you how to make a custom road piece for the road and traffic system. This part of the video has been sped up as modelling isn't what this video is about. As advanced modelling is not our specialty, we will create a simple 45 degree road piece in 3D Max Studio, but uh, don't let our poor modelling skills fool you. The road and traffic system can cope with whatever road models you want to throw at it, uh, whether it's different shapes, sizes or heights, it's your choice. Okay, once you're done modeling and have your FBX file or whatever Unity compatible model file you use, navigate to the location of your file and drop it in the scene. At this point, you want to set the correct scale. There are many ways to do this, but we're just going to do it manually and try to get it as close as possible to the existing road and traffic system pieces. Once you're happy with the scale of your custom road piece, it's time to start to add the parking nodes. The easiest way to do this would be to duplicate an existing piece and manipulate that piece to fit your custom piece. Start by removing any existing connections if there are some attached to your duplicated road piece. Let's drag it up to be next to the custom road model as it will make it easier to work with. Note there is no need to put the model and node children outside of the duplicated road piece, so ignore this small part of the video. Now rename the duplicated road piece to a name that suits you. We'll use my road piece. Now take your custom road model and place it under the duplicated road piece's child called models. Rename your custom road model to road just to keep things clean and now delete the existing original road piece model. Next make sure the custom road model is positioned where you want it to be. Usually this will be at 000, which is right in the center of the road piece. Now let's start on the nodes to determine the flow of the traffic and pathing. Blue represents one lane and pink represents the other. We'll need a minimum of four nodes per lane in this example, but you can add as many as you like to your custom road piece to get the desired path for your vehicles. Also worth doing is naming the pathing nodes differently so it might help you determine which node is which when you go to reference them later. Now click on the root of your custom road piece and you'll find the traffic system piece script attached. There is a simple button on this script called process children. It will assign all the nodes to the correct sections of the script to remove any manual assignment. And there you go. It currently has four primary left lane nodes and four primary right lane nodes. However, we're not done yet as primary nodes are used to allow vehicles an entry point to the road piece. If we left all eight nodes as primary nodes, then all linked road pieces to this piece would send vehicles to any one of the eight nodes, and that isn't what we want. Let's make this a prefab before continuing. It is very important that you put your custom road piece prefab under the traffic systems, then prefabs, then road pieces folder, as the traffic system tools look for all prefabs in this folder and list them in the inspector for easy road placement. 
if you don't put it under this folder, you, you won't get the option to place your custom road piece via the traffic system tools and you'll have to, to add it manually to the scene. Let's assign three of the four blue lane nodes as secondary nodes and do the same for the pink right lane nodes. Making them secondary nodes tells the traffic system tools that any road piece trying to link to this piece should ignore trying to send vehicles directly to any secondary node. Secondary nodes are only used for pathing locally on the current node piece and don't have anything to do with linking road pieces together. To assign a node to be a secondary node, untick the IS primary option. Click on the Process Children button and you'll now see that there is only one primary blue left lane node and one primary pink right lane node and the rest reside under the secondary containers. It is important that these nodes are set correctly so that the traffic system knows how to work with your custom road piece. Last thing before we are ready to actually use your custom road piece is to connect all the secondary nodes together so each vehicle that enters your custom road piece via a primary node knows which path to follow to get to the next road's primary node. You can do this by selecting a node and dragging the next node that a vehicle is to follow onto the connected local node slot for the currently selected node piece. The scene should now visually show the nodes connected and the direction they are heading. Do this for all secondary nodes you want to be connected together. Any primary or secondary node that doesn't have a node in the connected local node slot means it is an exit point for your road piece and all exit points will be connected to the next node piece's correct primary nodes so vehicles know how to transition to the new road pieces. Be sure to apply these changes to the prefab. Now navigate to the traffic system prefab in your scene so you can see the list of road pieces to choose from. You should see your custom road piece appear in the list in alphabetical order. Now you can use it just like you would any other default road piece. As the custom road pieces are most likely not going to be square or rectangular, you'll find you'll need to line them up once generated. This is the quickest solution currently for odd shaped road pieces. If your model is square or rectangular, then the traffic system should place the piece in the correct location for you to use the tools to manipulate the road piece as it uses the renderer's bounding boxes to determine the placement. That's all there is to it for making your custom road pieces.